Isaac Newton. That's me. Big hairdo, big brain box, maths genius, engineer, researcher, and one of the most famous scientists of them all. Discoverer of some mega important things about how the world around you works, and inventor of a helpful gadget for cats. Another special thing about me, I was born on the most exciting day of the year, Christmas Day. If I was in your class, I'd be, oh, let's see now, 362 years old. <laughs> Probably the oldest boy in your school. <laughs> no, uh, definitely. We live on a farm in Lincolnshire. I hate farms. Ugh. I was sent to study at Cambridge University, the best place to learn things in the country. I just arrived with my bag with feather quill pens and some ink and paper. Uh, I brought some candles and a candlestick, pajamas in there somewhere, a few tools, books, uh, cheese, bit of old cog, ruler, uh, set square probably. Uh, I said books. Did I say books? I said books. Didn't I? Yes. And, oh, and a padlock and a key to lock my desk. And do you know what? I'd also had to bring my own pot to pee in. No toilets either. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> the other students don't look very swatty or hard at work, do they? The great thing about my college was that it had a fantastic library. Books are very hard to get hold of in my day, and not many people I know have books at home. I had just got settled in when... <laughs> the dreadful plague struck our town. <laughs> It was brought here by rats, and it was the most horrible thing. People were dying all around me. The horse and cart would take the dead bodies away every day. It was too dangerous to stay, and we were all sent home. I rushed back to nice, quiet Woolsthorpe as fast as I could. It was very nice to be back at home, just sitting quietly in the garden, thinking hard. My brain was bulging with all the new stuff I had learned at Cambridge. One evening, I was sitting in the orchard under an apple tree, thinking about things. Then, boom, something whacked me on the head. Now, what was that? An apple had fallen off the tree. Now, that set me thinking. No, not about apples. Why do things fall down? Hmm? Have you ever stopped to ask yourself why? Hmm? No, well, maybe not. Well, I have. You see, I love questions like that. Why did it fall down, this apple, and not float or, or fall up? Look, what if everything isn't falling? What if something Invisible is pulling it down. <laughs> it does sound mad, doesn't it? <laughs> well, turns out I was right. Now, today we call this invisible force gravity. It's almost as if there's a giant magnet inside the Earth pulling everything towards it. Even on the other side of the world, my apple would still fall down. This great thought of mine, this Gravity was a brand new discovery, and it was a totally different way of looking at the world. If you have a brainwave, do you tell everyone about it? I do. No, I don't! I mean, why should other people be allowed to nick your best ideas? For instance, now here's a for instance, I was wondering what light is made of. You know light, don't you? Light, the brightness, that sort of thing. Yes, right, well, do you ever wonder what it's made out of? No? Well, I do. And I decided to find out. My first try, and this didn't help a lot, and I wouldn't recommend it at all, was to stare at the sun. Oh, where all the light comes from. 
Oh, ow, 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 ow. Oh, oh, that hurt. No, it can also turn you blind. In another experiment, I tried to poke a stick behind my eyeball and wiggle it around to see what I could see. <sighs> I'm completely insane, aren't I? Now, don't try this. All I saw were lots of funny colours floating about. Ugh. It was a very uncomfortable experience, but it made me think, where did they come from? Remember, I did this so you don't have to. Now, supposing there were other colours inside the light we can see. Now, after all, think of a rainbow or, uh, or, or bubbles in your bath. Well, they're full of lovely colours, aren't they? Well, where do these colours come from? So, I bought a prism. Now, that's a thick triangle of clear glass. And I shut all the doors and windows and sat in my room in the dark. Then I let just a teensy chink of light shine through the curtains and onto my prism. The white light split up, and on the wall, well, I saw all the colours of the rainbow. Light does contain lots of colours after all. Look, red, orange, yellow. Meow. My pesky cat kept pushing open the curtains and letting all the light in, so I cut a little flap for her so she wouldn't annoy me so much. You call it a cat flap. Well, it was me, Isaac Newton, who invented it. Now, even though I was the first one to understand that light is made up of a rainbow of colours, I still didn't tell anyone. Just like the gravity idea, I kept it super top secret. Well, by now, the nasty old plague was over. Hurrah! And it was time to go back to Cambridge. Hurrah, hurrah! I became a professor of mathematics at only 26 years old. Brilliant! The youngest ever! I'm fantastic! Now, today, we will be looking at the world of differential calculus. The thing is that, obviously, I was very interesting when I gave my lectures, but I had a funny feeling that not absolutely everyone was paying me full attention. What do you think? Now, how can you become a brilliant scientist a bit like me? Well, work. Great, isn't it? Well, keep on working and uh, thinking. Uh, well, never mind too much about when you go to bed or um, when you eat or anything like that. Uh, just, you know, read and observe and think and ask yourself hard questions about important stuff, not just rubbish. And if you have a bright idea, quickly jot it down wherever you are. There. Ah, easy. <laughs>